Hi, Rabbi. Hello. Okay, talk. Okay, no. Okay, good morning, everybody. As we go to the Chitas of today, we are holding in the portion of Toldos. We are holding in chapter 26, verse number 13. And the man became very great and he continued to become constantly greater until he has grown into extremely great. What does that mean? Ashi says, for they would say, rather the manure of Isaac mules than of Imelech silver and gold. He possessed sheep and possessions of cattle and much production. And the Philistines envied him. Ashi says, Avud Araba, much activity. He was a busy, busy guy, busy entrepreneur. Even all the wealth which his father's servants had dug. In the days of his father Abraham, him. What the Philistines did, they went and they covered up all their graves, all the all the all the, all the graves, all the all the wells that Avram had dug. The, 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 the Philistines covered up by and they filled it with earth. Imagine just the hatred to Avram Avinu. They hurt themselves to. Covered the good, covered all the wells. People shouldn't have any. I know. Why did they do that? Ashi says, because it was a takola. Because they said there's a danger and due to the armies all come upon us, right? Because there's water here, so people are gonna want to conquer this this part of the world, part of the country. <laughs> And good to know you, but it's time to move on. You are something we made because you became stronger than me. The Yitzhagarina went and he moved away and camped in the valley of Gerar. Ayosh, Yeshashah, and he left there. He stayed there. Rachik, but here, far away from the city of Gerar itself. Verse 18, Vayasha, Vyitza, Vayachpe, as Be'ena Samai, Yitza began dug the wells of water. Ashachar for me, Avram, which was dug in the days of Abraham, of his father, Vayistim, and Plishtim, which the Philistines had stopped, covered over. Achay Mais Avram, after the death of Avram, Vayikalem, Shemais, that he called, he renamed them. Shemais, Ashachar, Lavim, he gave them the names of his father. Gave these wells. But actually, the meaning of the wells that are dug in the days of his father Abraham and the Philistines have stopped him before Isaac traveled from Gerar. He went back, he re dug all these wells. And Isaac's servants dug another well. They found their well of living waters. Yitzhak and Son automatically became an argument between the, between the shepherds of Gerar and the shepherds of Yitzhak. Lamer saying, Lanu Hamaim, that the water belongs to us. They call the water, they call them Asak. Asak means, as Asher was saying, Irul, contention. It's Ashkumi because they contended with him. Asak is contention. It's Ashkumi. They engaged with him about this strife of contention. And they went, they dug another well. They argued on this well too. They called this well Sitna. Sitna means hate or harm, wrong, injury. And they went, they dig a third well. They didn't argue on it. And they called it the Chavis. That God has, has made room for us. And we'll be fruitful in the land. 
we fruitful in the land. The Gemara actually says that we that these are the these are symbolic to the first two base on Mikdash that were destroyed, and the third base on Mikdash is the Chay base, which will be the third temple will stand forever. We continue that completes the Chumish of two. Go now to the Tanya of the day. We continue at the beginning of the third Kuntis, Kuntis Akhan, the third essay of the Alter Rebbe. These are the essays the Alter Rebbe said on the, um, on, the on the beginning of explaining the, the, the Tanya, it's the beginning of Tanya. The Alter Rebbe in the, it explained that, that, that uh, we explained yesterday that there's some people who can accomplish. Uh, bringing about a revelation of godliness in the world straight through tefillah kavana. Tefillah the kavana, if you have pray with high intentions, you may have the capability of jumping, so to say, all the uh, all the uh, voida and to go straight to accomplish in a very easy way. Now the Alter Rebbe goes to explain the power of limit at Torah, the learning of Torah. What happens if you learn Torah with intent, for the sake of God, for the sake of heaven, or you learn Torah for Lelishma, you learn Torah for ulterior reasons? The Alter Rebbe starts, Lahav, Mashikos, Bishara Yechudim, to understand what's written in Shara Yechudim, chapter two. The Rebbe remarks in the Torah that Shara Yechudim contains several Sharim. In this in this portal, it's called Shad Ha Ha Anava, Shad Ha Rucha the 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 portal of humility, the portal of uh, a, a divine inspiration. Shad Tikkun Avayna is the portal of rectification of sin. The Rebbe then noted the precision of the Alter Rebbe writing in chapter forty of Tanya. He quoted the passage Shad Ha Yichudim. And specifies that the, its source is in Shad ha Hanova, uh, while with regard to another passage, it simply says Shad Yehudim. The line of blood for clarification is neither why in chapter 40, when speaking of angels that are created in the world of Yitzhida by Turner that is not studied with Shema for its own sake, Dr. Then besides Shad ha Hanova. Uh, while here he just cites Shari Yechud. Okay, so that's a separate uh, interesting concept that Rebbe brings, brings up concerning that why the Alter Rebbe doesn't give us the exact place to the, the actual uh, the actual which Shari it was. Okay, irrelevant. Now they had Torah that through the learning of Torah Shleim Kavana when one learns Torah without proper intention. Creates angels in the world of formation. Bisham, in that in the Wadir, in Shah Yechudim, it brings down the Zoya of Pashishlach, the last call of this Avid. There's no voice lost from this world. But a call of the Anaisa, which goes to the Son of Kubaka, except the voice of Torah and prayer. That ascends and pierces the heavens, meaning it does not remain below but ascends. So, in general, there's no voice lost from this world, it stays in this world. That means, besides the words, so regular words stay in this world, not talk, stays in this world, but the world, the words of Torah and the words of Phila break the heavens, so to say. Now, through the intentions of prayer, it says that through intentional prayers are created angels in the world of creation. As for the intentions of Teda, if somebody has, when he learns Teda with Kavana, then he creates angels in the world of creation. And it was prayer without any contention, it repels utterly downwards. So it comes out, if I learn Torah without intent, I create where I create angels in the world of Yitzira. If I learn Torah with Kavana, with intent, I create angels in the world of creation. I learned, I dive in with Kavana, 
I create angels of the world of creation. I daven shalei b'kavana, it goes even less than the world of Yitzhak. Because of the Zayi Pasha B'kudai, as the Zayi states, Pasha B'kudai, that face man, it's page 245, one of the base. Goi rakia tata, into the lowest heavens. What does that mean? When prayer is not as it should be, meaning when without proper intent, it's banished into the lowest heavens that govern the world. That means prayer without intention is worse than learning without intention. The ikrin susat valisoy, the prayers are called invalid prayers. Wow. The Zayir goes on to say, Examine the Zayir in a portion of Ayakel, page 201, second page. Ihi mila kedaka yos. They says it's like seemly words, meaning a prayer is prompted by proper. If a prayer is prompted by proper intent, then angel pointed at a warden of the prayers, kiss it and elevate it. Thus, prayer sends only when it's properly, when it's propelled by proper intent. If so, sins, teda, and prayer are similar when they are performed with proper intent. Why does improper tent of lacking in this tater is still able to create angels in the world of Yitzhida? And pray without proper intent is repelled in the lowest heavens. Why is prayer worse than Torah? The Rebbe says, I have been retained foolish, let me try to move. However, the difference between tater and prayer without intention is self evident. What's the self evident? who maybe they must believe it. But when one studies Taita without even proper intent, one understands and knows what he's learning. He's learning Torah. So whatever, even though he doesn't have the proper intention, but he's learning, he's learning something. Or otherwise, it's not called study at all. So we're, 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 if he's done reading, then it's nothing. But a person that learns Torah means that person that learns Torah, but he's learning for other reasons. He'll turn him out, he's self, for self-learning, become a Tamil Sachan. He wants to show that he can study. Whatever the reason might be. So it's not proper intent, but still you're learning. Actually, Stam is studying Torah without the intention of Lashma for the sake of Torah. Avas Hashem. The love of God should believe by that to the side, this in his gilly and open the way. Back in my Abbas Tel is he's learning, you can learn other knowledge. He's learning Torah because he loves God. So in, in an innermost aspect, he loves God, and therefore he is learning Torah for the love is ultimate in strength, his sense, his subconscious love of God, which every Jew loves God. He's not learning the Torah for the actual. On the other hand, not that he's learning Torah because he. See, in Torah, there's three levels. There's the concept of learning Torah for the sake of the right reason, to connect to God. Then the Torah for the sake of learning. I like learning. I like love knowledge. And also because for some reason, Torah draws me. So I enjoy, I enjoy the learning of Torah. I enjoy the knowledge. And there's a person that learns Torah, that's the Leil Shema. Then there's a person that learns Torah for negative reasons. What's the negative reasons in the Torah? is ego, because of his ego. He wants to show this God. He wants self-aggrandizement or the like. Guy wants to learn Torah because he wants to, he wants to be the sage of the, of the class. He wants to be the, 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 the knacker, the Thomas Pachel. So a person that learns Torah like that is the worst situation. That's, that's ego, total selfish kind of situation. But in this manner, Torah study is not a stand higher than the sun. As Commission Parshim Parshim Ayachid Afechom Gimel, as the Zoya writes in portion of Ayachid, to page 223, side two, to the Zoya states, and the verse, what profit is from man from all his toil that he toils under the sun? Expression. 
Mas Kadosh Tachas Hashem. So what, what is new under the sun? What is the worth of man on all the toil that he toils under the sun? Does it not refer to the toil of Torah? Torah for Torah is loftier than the sun. However, if he toils in the undertaking of self aggrandizing, you learn the Torah for self, self greatness. Ah, uh, that's the Torah. Any Torah you learn. I mean, I mean, Lachter, but you, you learn the Torah, you're going to be able to hit people with. You're going to be able to show people how kind of sage you are, and therefore you can put them down, and therefore you can be greater than them. That is, then your Torah doesn't go above the sun. It doesn't descend, the loft doesn't go nowhere. The Torah stays right under the sun. That's what the Zayah says. Why? Because it's once thought and intent are clothed within the letters of Tata. That he that, that, that he others, the Ainamanichan, and since he has evil thoughts, he has egotistical thoughts. It doesn't let it go above. Bosh doesn't let it go above. The ulterior motives that derive from Clippus thus encumbers his words of Taylor. Person simply learns for self greatness, for his own ego, the Taylor stuck in the world. And that's the same thing when a person dabbles in Shleiba Kavan. And so to a prayer without intent. What means prayer without intent? Prayer without intent is he's thinking about other things. What is he thinking when he's davening? He's thinking about other things. The person davens is praying, but his machshava, his thoughts in other places. So what happens? That thought is connected to his prayer. His alien thoughts, machshava zaris, his alien thoughts. However, since his intention is addressed to God, after all, in a state of prayer, except that alien thoughts are interposed. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I mean, the guy is davening. And he's thinking about something, thinking about business, or he's thinking about uh, who knows what. What is he going to do that day? <laughs> so he's had machshava, but he's davening. Therefore, therefore, it's easily corrected, so that his prayer may once rise again. This is an interesting thing we mentioned. This is a beautiful concept that the Alta Rebbe says. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. Listen to this. The Alta Rebbe says, This is when he pray, prays with the proper intention. Even one full prayer gathers piecemeal from the prayers of the entire year. That means when one, when one day, one passage of prayer was read in proper intent, and on another day, another passage and so on, then all of the passages are gathered together. In essence, you should have intent at least one, one passage in, 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 in your davening. What's going to happen if you have intent in one passage? It will elevate all the times you said that passage without intent. Thus, completing one complete prayer with all the prayers of the whole year. Therefore, if you cannot have intent when you're davening because you're too busy or people are bothering you, whatever, make sure to have one prayer intention. Listen to the prayer. Understand the prayer. Daven l'shma. Daven because you want to daven to God. Take a prayer and daven. And what's going to happen? All the davenings that you daven that prayer the entire year or whatever years that you daven that prayer, it's hanging in the air. When I daven with Shema, I bring it up to Elama Habria. I take all the times that I said that prayer without intent, I bring it up. That's the beauty. And all the prayers throughout the year are elevated. Pasha Bikud has written the Zoya of Pasha Bikud. We thus see 
that in one sense, tell you without proper intent, is superior to prayer without proper For such total study creates angels in the world of Yitzhira, while prayer without intent is repulsive. On the other hand, and you lack the proper intent in Torah study is such that it prevents from ascending, as the case of studying the stake itself in grandement, then is lower than prayer without intent. Great, right? that means learning Torah for your selfish reasons is worse than davening without any intention, because that never goes up. But prayer without intention has the capability of going. For one, one proper prayer, or even a compilation of different prayers that add up to one prayer with proper intent elevates all other prayers of that year. That year, because once the year is over, you, uh, the, the, the energy of that year is gone, so you have to wait for next year. So you have to push it, do it. You have to make sure that, you, that when you dive it, you say you try to you have during the year that every part of your prayer you had lishma, you had kavana, you had intention when you said that prayer. So that means every, that during the year, everybody in 365 days you should be able to say the entire prayer, taking a prayer a day and having a tent in one prayer in that day. That will elevate all the prayers. And you didn't say, I mean, you should have intent to the whole prayer. You should do the whole prayer with intention, no question about it. But if you can't, whatever, you have mashallah rizadas, your mind is, it doesn't let you. At least have one prayer intent as you say all the prayers. Very powerful thing. Very powerful things uh, based on the Zayas. It's an unbelievable thing. So that's it for one proper prayer, even a completion of different prayers that add up to prayer proper and touch elevates all of the prayers of that year. The God to turn story by contrast, even if one later studies with proper intent, this does not elevate previous study. Actual repentance is required. Till such a time once Torah study is an exile with the clipper spawned his ulterior motives. Nevertheless, since all Jews eventually will repent, but it says no one will left rejected, our sages advise that one should always study Torah performance and misses even if they're done with their own sake. That's why we shouldn't stop learning Torah, even if we do it for the for a wrong reason. Learn Torah. As I said, in Torah, learning, there's three levels. The highest level is to learn for the sake of heaven. The next level is just to learn. To learn, because you enjoy learning, not because of a negative, not because of a positive. You enjoy learning. Wonderful. The third level is even the lowest level. You learn Torah for, for, for ulterior motives. Learn Torah, even if you're doing ulterior motives, because we know one day you're going to do chuva, and your chuva is going to elevate all the Torah that you've learned. Indeed, either one of all ulterior motives, but eventually you will achieve the state of the Shema. When he repents, he will do Torah Shema. And it will elevate all the Torah that he learned. This explains all that happened in the chapter 39. Beautiful, beautiful Tanya of two things. Truly, truly. Today is the 28th day of the month, which is chapter 135 to chapter 139. You do those chapters, you will do the Chitas of the day. I want to wish you all a good day, a wonderful day, a happy day, and a healthy day. And in Mitchem, I'll see you all tomorrow, 8 a.m. We'll continue. Hanya.